Good luck.
Bruce again, and as you guessed by the footage, I went to the Super Retro Games Fair in Leeds, and it was absolutely fantastic. Just loads of games, um, a fair few bargains, and to top it all, I met up with loads of good lads, like uh, other YouTubers, and me mate Alan came along. So yeah, it was a really, really good day. Um, I did do a lot of tours around the place and get like quite a bit of footage, but I mean, a lot of the time was spent at the bar. Um, I kind of regret not filming a lot of the shenanigans that we got up to um but chris from the retro heads has done an amazing job of that so i'll link their video in the description if you're interested in seeing some of the hijinks that we got up to uh, like on the day but as far as the day goes it was just absolutely fantastic um steve the bloke that runs it's absolutely brilliant um, it had switched locations from its last venue it was down um in the marriott close at the city center um, and this time he'd moved it up the um leeds university and to be honest it was a much better venue um there was you know loads of room it was a lot more airy and open and there seemed to be a lot more sellers there and i don't know if that was because just the whole venue was more open but you know it just it seemed like you know it, it was bigger it just seemed bigger so you know as far as that goes it just it was absolutely it was brilliant it was a much better venue not that the marriott was bad or anything but once you stepped into this place you could see it was just much it was better lit and it was just you know a lot better atmosphere and there was loads and loads of people there and um, you've seen on the footage I, I showed you people funneling through the door and it you know it's it sharp filled up like and um, there was loads of people in there and before you know you know your shoulder at the shoulder with people stinky sweaty in the middle of summer but it's great fun you know i'd been all that rummaging and I absolutely but i like i say the highlight of the day had to be at the bar and honestly it was just absolutely fantastic just uh, meeting and catching up with with other tubers um, obviously the retro heads chris and gav and um, lee called all nerds he was there too um, but for the first time I got to meet um, Gross Newton in um, Tutti UK um, and they're just absolutely top blokes they are, um, absolutely spot on, just like they are on camera, you know, there's no airs and graces about people, it's just like, you know, you're just sat down with a pal having a beer and it's just absolutely great because we've all got the same interests, you know, so I was great to meet um, Gross and Tutti for the first time and great to catch up with uh, the retro heads and Lee, calling all nerds, um, there was other people there, um, Joe and water level, he was there of course. Um he stayed back and had a few had a few beers with her. Um and from from what I gathered from Chris and uh, Chris and Gav's footage, the retro heads, um he was saying he was gonna go for ages and he ended up staying for like two hours. So he obviously had a good day too. Um who else was there? Um Mort Mort from Mort Moments. Um he was there filming. He does a great job, he's got a great channel. And um, what he does is he catches people going into the event, asking them what they want and stuff, and then he'll catch them going out the event and seeing what they've actually picked up. So I'd recommend his stuff as well. I'd definitely link his videos in the description along with the retro heads and everybody else that was there who's done a video. I'll link their videos in the description. Who else was there? Oh, Wishwash as well. He um he came up with Tootie. I think he gave Tootie a lift. Um, Lewis, I think his name is. I'm not that good with names, but I'm sure that's your name, mate. And yeah, um, it was just great just, you know, catching up with people. And that, to me, I, I mean, I got some bargains. I'm going to get into the pickups. I know I'm ya yaggering, on, yaggering on a bit, but it's just, that was the highlight to me, just being able to catch up with people and just share a beer with these people that I've watched their videos for for years and just, you know, be able to just have dialogue with them and have a bit of crack and banter with them, as well as a couple of beers. So that was absolutely brilliant. Then does this count as a pickup? It's the souvenir program. I just thought this was like really, really cool. You know, I mean, I usually try and get a flyer just to stick on the side of my shelf, just to remind us of the day because I'm a soft, sentimental sod. Uh, but this is like a whole souvenir program. It's got loads of stuff as well as the event map. It's got like um, interviews with the retro collector and stuff like that. Like really thorough. And I was really impressed with this. So I made sure this got home in, in one piece and I'll be keeping this as a bit of a souvenir. Okay, like. then first thing I'm going to do as far as games go is um, start with like gifts. I was like very lucky enough to be given a few PlayStation 1 games um, by my mate Alan. Um, who took us down there and I want to take this opportunity actually to say thank you very much Alan because it's much appreciated he came down it was his first event and he had loads of fun like uh, we both did and he got loads of bargains as well like so it was a great day but he picked up some doubles at the car boot sale a couple of weeks before and he said he'd bring them when he picked us up to go to Leeds so I give us Tekken 3 I've been after this a while but you know when I say it for like 10 pound I think I'm not paying 10 pound for Tekken bloody 3 it was so common Box is a bit beat up, but I'm not bothered about that. I can quickly sort that out. Um, Duke Nukem Land of the Babes. This is one of those um, third person Duke Nukem games. I've got Time to Kill, so I quite enjoy it. Think of like Duke Nukem, but like playing in the kind of Tomb Raider style, if you like. It's, uh, yeah, they're quite good. They're not as good as Duke Nukem 3D, but you know, if you like Duke, then 
these are these are pretty good. And um, next as well, Spider-Man, the Neversoft version, the Neversoft one on PS1. I've been after this for a while as well. This and the second one are really, really good games. Um, I remember enjoying them back in the day, but I don't know how the graphics and all that and the controls are going to hold up. It sounds a bit weird going back to PS1. But yeah, still tough to get it. Like, um, I, never soft. I mean, they always did fantastic work with the Tony Hawk's games. And then they came out with this Spider-Man right, game. Right, more gifts. I got these um, these two from Gav. He put on um, like a chat group that we're in on WhatsApp a few weeks back about PS2 games he was trading in. And if anyone wanted any. So I've seen Code Veronica X, Resident Evil and crazy taxi um yeah i love crazy taxi one of the first games i got with the ps2 and um, i remember playing it with a steering wheel and you know I, it can be a bit people say it's repetitive and all that but i just i love it and the, the soundtrack's absolutely amazing and um, the offspring i'm a massive offspring fan so yeah i love crazy taxi and code veronica x just resident evil survival horror Um, i think this is the first one on playstation 2 so never played it so i'm sure i'll give it a go eventually when i get a chance but uh thank you very much for them gav it's much appreciated mate. okay this next one's a gift from chris from the retro heads and he put on his video when he picked these up a few weeks ago if anybody wanted them because he had spares and it's a teenage mutant hero turtle um like framed picture i don't know if anyone remembers these from back in the day i certainly do i remember them being on sale um like at local markets and stuff and I'm sure I had um, Real Ghostbusters one that was pretty much the same, like the cartoon print with the, the red frame, like, and I just chuffed to get that. I've got, like, a bit of a Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles or Ninja Turtles shelf going. I've got, like, board games and loads of games, Hyper Stone Heist and the NES one. I would have a bit of a uh, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles shelf gun on if I wanted, so... Uh, I might actually do that. I've got plenty of room, actually. So I chuffed to bits to get that. Thank you very much, Chris. That's, uh, that's much appreciated, mate. Okay, then I'll run you down with some of the bargains that I got. Um, I didn't really take much money. Um, and to be honest, what I did take, I wanted to save as much as I could for beer and stuff. So I um, I tried to keep my hand in my pocket as much as I could, unless I see like a real bargain. And I, the first thing I found is like really, really cool. Not really a bargain, but I got this off Steve Stoll, um, the guy that runs Retro Events. Um, and obviously it's, a, it's an official sticker collection, like Nintendo sticker collection packet with six stickers in. It's um, copyrighted 1992. Uh, I remember the, I don't think I collected these. I was more into football stickers, um, like the Panini football stickers. But as far as um, these go, I do actually remember them being on sale. And that's just, that's just cool to have. Just, you know, just a nice one there. Looks cool on the shelf. Uh, £1.50. And uh, Steve had like a box full of these. Um, and a box full of like original, the original Batman movie. I'm sure there were like stickers or cards. Or um, the ones that you get, you know, like bubblegum in. He had loads of like boxes full of these things and I just thought this was really cool and it looked like pretty good on my shelf really. Now the next bargain's a bit stupid because I cannot really play this um, but it, it's just 100% nostalgia why I got it. It's the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles game um, for the C64. Now basically why I did that, why, if you don't know this is, this is basically just the NES um, you know Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles game and um, by Konami but obviously it was ported to multiple home systems the C64 being one of them um, I had it on the Amstrad CPC but basically the the box art and the boxes and everything was exactly the same even the manual was exactly the same um, it's even got instructions for you know the Amstrad CPC in this manual it's just basically the the tapes were different or something along those lines but I had this as a kid like I didn't have the NES Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles I played it on Amstrad CPC and yeah this is the box that it came in and even on the CPC it still had this silly exclusive free gift of um, I think it's like postcards and stickers and tattoos that you could get from Boots because you know what, I'll buy my computer games from Boots back in the day. Um, and I remember them being in my box when I was when I was younger. Um, obviously this is just like the... Like the instructions and the tape. Like remember when games came on tape? But it just, you know, when I seen it, I just instantly, it instantly took us back to when I was a kid on my first, um, like my first computer, the Amstrad CPC. And you know, this is one of the box games I had. And yeah, like I say, I've got a bit of a Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles thing going on. So this will look good on a shelf as well, even though I can't play it. God, I'm just collecting things to sit on shelves and gather like dust. Right, the next two are just random bargains that I just happened to run across. Um, I seen Tomb Raider 3 and I picked up Tomb Raider 2 the other week as well for like a pun 50. And I seen this for £2. And honestly, when I, when I see decent games that I'm going to play for like, you know, 
one two pound an hour was by them um I might have getting it like for one pound fifty or something in a charity shop one day, but uh, I mean Tomb Raider three, probably not the best one. Uh, number two was my favourite, like, but you know, still just a just a common PS one game that I should really have. So when I see it just sat there for two pound, I think I am gonna buy that. But you know, nothing special. Then I spied Super Off Road on SNES, and this had a two pound sticker on. Um, I think basically because there's a few little there's a few little dings in the side of the cart and that, and the cart is a bit dirty. But I can just clean that up. Um, I didn't really want a, an immaculate copy of Super Off-Road, do you know what I mean? But, like I always say in these videos, if I can see um, loose snares or NES carts for like, you know, for £5 and under, I just snap them up because, you know, we're now what the prices are getting like for them. And even just crappy common games, it's, you know, it's hard to find games for like £5 and under. And that's kind of like my, my bargain bracket. So for retro games, for £2, cartridge based i'm gonna take it all day long super off-road i've it's like a top-down racing game um it was in the arcades i've got um ivan iron man's off-road as well i think this is like a sequel on super nintendo i've got like the original on nes which is pretty fun and um, great and like two players and stuff and um, supposed to be great with like the multi-tap as well that you get where you can you know, you can play four players, so you could probably do that with, with Super Off-Road as well. But, I mean, the cart's a bit dirty, but I just clean that up. It doesn't really bother me for £2. It's another bargain. Okay, the next three I got were probably, like, me three bargains of the day. So, I'll show you the first two. Um, I got Medieval on PS1 and Guilty Gear on PS1. Um, basically, what happened is i seen both of these and I thought, wow, that's a pretty low price. Um, I'd seen Medieval, like a black label, on another store for £17. And... Um, I think the second one was up for about £20. So when I seen this for £5, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely getting that. So I Medieval for, for a fiver. Um, basically, it's kind of like a, a horror style, um, like RPG based as well. It kind of, it spans multiple genres. Um, you know, there's a lot of, it's not 3D platform. And how could I describe it? It's kind of like a, a horror based RPG. It reminds us very much of um, the Nightmare Before Christmas and things like that. Very much um, like hu dark human stuff like that. And basically, you're a dead knight who's got a habit of losing his head. Um, and you've kind of like, you know, got to avenge your death and stuff like that, as far as I believe. I've never actually played it, but I hear fantastic stuff about it. And yeah, it just looks like really dark and humorous. And, you know, it's got a bit of an RPG element, you know, as far as like leveling up weapons and things go. And yeah, like um, your attacks. So that kind of appeals to us as well. But when I say for £17, I think £17 for a PS1 game. I can bump into it in the charity shop for a couple of pun, but then when I see it in a couple of stalls later for a fiver, I'm going to get it. But anyway, I digress. Sat next to it was Guilty Gear, um, a fountain franchise that I no, like, I'm not too familiar with. I know a lot about it and I know people rave about it. I'm sure some of the people that were responsible for Street Fighter or from uh, an SNK team or something, they've got real big like um, 2D fighting game pedigree ended up um, disbanding from whatever company they were with. I'm not sure if it was Capcom or SNK anyway. Um, and then they the formed their own company and started coming up with the Guilty Gear games. Basically, it's a 2D fighting game on PS1. Um, the graphics are absolutely stunning. And a game that I thought should be worth a lot more than, than the £6 it had on it. And basically, I just put these together and said, can you do us both these for a tenner? Um, he wasn't going to grumble or a pun. But, I mean, Guilty Gear even for £6, that's a, that's a great deal, that. Um, I was showing Gav in the bar later on uh, from Retro Heads, and even Gav says, he goes, wow, well, that's a kind of good deal on a uh, Guilty Gear, like. But I don't know if it's because it's like a, a white label or something along those lines. Um, like, not, wait, I suppose it's got the black label, but it's just, it's the way it's presented, you know, it's not the standard box where, you know, you've got your box art, it's like a box art within like the this white border i don't know if that like diminishes the value not that i'm bothered because i just want to play the game you know and i love me 2d um fighting games so and when they're on ps1 they're absolutely beautiful as well not that they're not on a uh, mega drive and uh super nintendo as well but you know just just absolutely brilliant to play and chuffed to get both of these for a tenner especially when i've seen that for 17 pound on another stall it's like how can these prices vary so much but it just goes to show you know like if you want a game at some of these events, didn't just pick it up as soon as you see it. You know, scout the place out a bit because, you know, you'd, you'd kick yourself if you bought it for £17 and then walked two stores down and then seen it for a fiver. So one thing I've learned of going to these events is to just kind of like pace myself and check out everything before I start spending my money. 
Oh, you well now, what a tight horse I am anyway. Okay, last pickup of the day, and it was my bargain of the day, um, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I was desperate to get one cheap NAS game, you know, between my £5 and under budget. And um, this had £8 on it. And I don't know how it came about. I think my mate Alan, who was there with us, he was trying to get a deal on one game, um, a pretty expensive game. I can't remember what it was. It was probably GameCube because he was looking for a lot of GameCube um, on Saturday and basically I says oh wait this had £8 on I thought well, that's a decent price for Chip and Dale like uh, but if I can get a few more knocked off I'd be absolutely chuffed so I gave it to Alan and he bundled it with what game he had um, and the bloke wouldn't come down on the game that Alan had but he was more than willing to come down on this game so I just separated them and basically he says I'll do your Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers for a fiver so like I say uh, five pound um, cartridge based games, you know, whether they're loose or not, and if they're good games like Chippendale Rescue Rangers, um, you know, I'm gonna pick them up. Basically, Capcom in their Disney games on um, the NES were absolutely fantastic, they did a great job. Um, you know, there's Darkwing Duck, there's DuckTales, um, didn't they do? There was a Tailspin game as well. So, yeah, Capcom did loads of great Disney games on the NES, and this is this is one of them. Um, I played it when I came back actually on Saturday and it's actually pretty damn tough. You think these are going to be kids games and they'll be quite easy. Like um, DuckTales I find quite easy saying that I've played that quite a bit. But um, I, I put this in. It's it's a bit of a challenge like to be fair but that's what you that's what you want on, on uh, 8-bit and 16-bit systems. You want a bit of a challenge. But I uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers for five pounds. Right then, that's pretty much it. Um, I think this video's gone on long enough. But um, lastly, I just want to thank Steve from Retro Events for all his hospitality on the day. It was an absolutely fantastic event. Um, and it always is. Retro Events always do great events, you know. And um, whether it's a Super Retro Games Fair, and um, the normal Retro Games Fair, or Collectabilia, all the ones I've been to, absolutely brilliant. And Steve's just such a class and inviting bloke. Um, I didn't really get a chance to have a good speak to him this time because, I mean, he's just so busy at these events, you see him. I mean, he runs his own, his own stall as well and he's flying here, there and everywhere trying to get um, everything organised, you know. And then on top of that, he's still, you know, he's got time to chat to us, nobodies, and just, you know, give us the time of day. So thank you very much, Steve. It's much appreciated, mate. Um, anybody, I'd recommend these retro events. They're absolutely fantastic. And I want to thank uh, my mate Alan as well for getting us there, lift there and a lift back. Um, we had a right laugh in the van there and back and um, at the event, picking up loads of bargains. Just an absolute brilliant day. Um, thank Chris and Gav from the Retro Heads for my gifts. Much appreciated, as I've already said, lads. Um, I want to thank Lee, calling all nerds for the paint that I never bought him back. I ain't about, I ain't about, I ain't about, I ain't about. Ben owes me one, so yeah, I'm up. Yeah, ben owes you one. And just say thank you to everybody that I met on the day, because um, it was just an absolute fantastic day. Anyone that's made a video about it that I've watched and stuff, I'll um, I'll link every I'll link all their videos in the description, like the Retro Heads. Um, Tootie's done a great video as well. Um, so is more from Mort's Moments. So I'll get all them videos linked in the description, along with the Retro Events um, website and Facebook page, so you can check out when all their next events are coming, so you can get yourself to one of these events because they're absolutely brilliant. But like I say, I've kept these for too long because this video's gone on forever. So I'll leave you like I always do and just say thank you very much for watching, people, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. Bye.